Okay, so in this video, we will prove part B of the root test. If you recall, part B states that if the limit as n tends to infinity of the nth root of a n in absolute value is strictly less than 1, then the corresponding series converges absolutely. Suppose that the limit of our expression is equal to L. What we're seeing is L is strictly less than 1. So let's visualize this onto our real line. So this is 0, this is 1, and our limit is some real number that is less than 1. Now of course, since we take the nth root of a n in absolute value, the terms are non-negative, so the limit must be at least 0. Let's now construct a small interval around L, where the right end point is strictly less than 1. As L is some real number less than 1, we can pick a real number between L and 1. Let's call this real number R. And we'll think of 0 being the left hand point of our interval. So we take the interval around L, beginning at 0, ending at R. Now, if we ask ourselves, well, what is this really saying? This is saying that when n is becoming larger and larger and larger, the terms of our sequence are getting closer and closer to L. Well, how close? As close as we want. Therefore, if we take n to be big enough, we can make every term of our sequence fit inside of our small interval around L. but only if n is large enough, how large we don't know, so we'll say bigger than some arbitrary positive integer. Let's now rewrite this in terms of inequalities. So this means that an absolute value, the nth root of a n, will be between 0 and r, For all values of lowercase n larger than this again, whoops, for all values of n bigger than our arbitrary positive integer n. The inequality here of interest is this one, keeping in mind that r is some real number that is strictly less than 1. So, we're looking at here non negative terms. If we take the nth power on both sides, this will preserve the inequality, which implies that the absolute value of a n will be less than r to the n for all values of lowercase n larger than uppercase n. Keeping in mind, uppercase n is some fixed positive integer. Well, if you think about this, if all the terms on the left are less than the terms on the right for n bigger than this point, then if we sum the smaller terms, so summing beginning at uppercase n all the way up to infinity, so if we sum the smaller terms, it will be at most summing up the larger terms. And this should be a very familiar series, right? We are summing larger and larger powers of n of a fixed real number. This is a geometric series. And if you recall, a geometric series will converge if and only if r, the terms that we're taking the nth power of, is an absolute value strictly less than 1. Well, it's obviously the case. As r lies strictly between 0 and 1, clearly an absolute value, r equals r, as it's already non-negative, it is strictly less than 1. So this is a converging geometric series so this is nothing but a real number, therefore is less than infinity. But this sum, this infinite series, is less than this infinite series, which is finite. So this series, being at most this one, 
must also be finite. Which is a simpler way of saying that the series, of course, converges. Right? When you're adding non-negative terms, as you're adding more and more terms, two things can happen. The result gets bigger and bigger and bigger and will grow out of bounds, therefore the series will diverge, or the result is finite, which is our case, therefore converges. So the series of a n and absolute value from uppercase n to infinity converges. And we could quote here the comparison test. We have compared this series to this series, which converges, and as we have series of non-negative terms, the comparison tests, the comparison test story applies, so the series here converges by the comparison test, which we can just write CT. But now think about this. We were interested in a series beginning at 1. I mean, let's not think of the absolute value now, but the only difference between beginning at 1 and beginning at n is that we are now here omitting the terms a1 in absolute value, a2 in absolute value, up to a n minus 1, but we are only omitting a finite set of terms of our series. This will never affect convergence, as a finite sum of real numbers is a real number. So because the series beginning at uppercase n converges, it must be true that the series beginning at 1 also converges. But of course, if a series of terms in absolute value converges, this is, by definition, a statement that the series without the absolute value is called absolutely convergent. Which complete our proof. So we have just proved that if the limit as n tends to infinity of the nth root of a n in absolute value is strictly less than 1, then the series of a n from 1 to infinity does converge absolutely, which, of course, means that the series converges, but the series of the terms in absolute value also converges. And to summarize the proof, what we were able to show is that because of this inequality, it implies that the series of the terms in absolute value for large enough values of n is at most some converging geometric series. So the sum here must be finite by the comparison test. Omitting the first few terms of a series will never affect convergence, so the series beginning at 1 also converges, but if a series of terms in absolute value converges, so does the series without the absolute value, which shows that the series converges absolutely. And that's it.